Hey folks, this is Jay from Jay Talk. And of course, we've got our wonderful co host, the ever loving, empathetic Nick from the Nick Drop. <laughs> you had to dig that one way out from the bottom of the bag. Yeah, I did. I did. But I, had, I couldn't just do something simple. So, yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, joining us again, we've got Steven. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm back. <laughs> yep. There you Pick go. The fuck some shit up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Sorry, I'm my theme song. Yeah, there you go. So it's got to be quick, quick, it, quick. It's got to be quick. It's got to be quick. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, you know, good, good to have you back, man. It really is. Thank you. You know, yeah, it is. So, uh, we've been waiting. Whatever. <laughs> no, we have, man. We've been talking about it forever. Yeah, we did. But you know, we 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 did that whole. Uh, session with Abigail and the Refreshingly 50. Yeah. You know, and that was good. You know, we, we always enjoy having Abigail around. So, yeah, she's actually doing really good on TikTok now. Really? She? 900 views yeah. on one video I, is I good? Yesterday yeah, you'd today. be surprised. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. She got some skills now. We need to we need to use her marketing. Yeah, because I think she really knows. She, you know, she needs. We need to push ourselves a little oh, bit more on the marketing oh, side of this thing. Well, who's showing, you know, boobs and ass? Then, well, that's no. how women do it on TikTok. You know, yeah. I don't think Abigail's doing that, but <laughs> I would applaud her if she did. Yeah. No, there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, people making uh, TikTok yes. without doing that. But you know, exactly. I know what you mean. So, <laughs> Daddy Jay over there. Whatever. Let's focus on the boobs. Jay, yeah, Jay doesn't have to worry about sitting next to his wife flipping through TikTok and boobs yeah, show right. up. That's yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I'm adjusting my camera a little bit, just trying to get things situated. But, um, so today we're going to, we're going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to surprise you guys. I'll catch you off guard in the middle of the show. Just be, just be aware. Do you have Taco Bell? No. I don't need that. I don't need to be cut off like that. No, 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 no. But actually, you know what? Taco oh, Bell is really good right now. Have you seen how they make their beans? Yes, but you know what? That's the only place you can get gas for under a dollar. True. <laughs> that man makes sense. <laughs> That's good. That is so good. <laughs> There you go. There's my joke for the day. <laughs> okay, maybe $2. But you know what I mean. I mean, gas is ridiculous right now. It's always guaranteed gas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, my God. see, they got all crazy about that gas. And I saw a TikTok video just a few minutes ago of some guy in Ireland saying, you Americans need to shut the up. And he said, the reason you need to shut up is because America has gas prices are half of what they are around the world. Yep. He said regular gasoline in Ireland right now is over $8 a gallon. Yeah. Yep. I Stop over blaming Biden. That's what he said. I was like, oh, he threw the politics in, swipe. Yep. Yeah, exactly. California's yeah. the closest to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you can leave politics out of it, then I might listen to you. But the second you yeah. start throwing politics into it, yeah. Sorry. But... You know, yeah. we, we try to stay away from politics on the show, so, you know, we'll, we're going to leave that one. <laughs> but I, let, I do, I have seen some other <laughs> posts, whatever. I have seen some other posts where people were talking about the cost of gas in other countries. And, you know, here's the whole thing. We've gotten good at drilling for it and good at processing it. So there's got to be, you know, a reason why it's so cheap here. Yeah, you know? and we can get it anywhere because we've got hundreds of thousands of miles of pipeline all over the United States. I think that the truth, That's true. you know. But, so you know that pipeline will stop too. So yeah, yeah. So today we're talking about boys and their toys, and then you should have an episode of girls and their toys. Oh well, well we, wait, come on, man. We we've not, talked not about that, that a little bit, anyway. And and I'm You're not, not talking about the bedroom. I'm not talking about 15 year olds and what they do in their puberty. I'm just talking about you know 
men and their toys. How about that? Is that better? Men and their toys. Men and their toys. Men and their toys. Okay, so I'm going to start off because I probably have the least expensive toys out of everyone. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) Uh, Jay's got priorities. (laughs) No, I just have, well, okay, yeah, I've got priorities. Children's, you know, that's it. Yes. Yeah, I got and there chickens. you have it because I didn't have any toys until my youngest hit like 17, 18. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah, I know. As soon as that I child agree. support started, stopped hitting, right? Woo-hoo. Children just yeah. suck the money right out of you. <laughs> right. <Drive>. Exactly. <laughs> so, so for me, my uh, <clears throat> I think my biggest thing that I've been collecting lately is is swords. That's what I was fixing to say. You okay. better say swords. Yeah, I know. He is a big sword guy. Yeah, exactly. I think what I'm up to like 13, 14 now, something like that. You know, insane collection of swords. And everybody, you know, they'll look at you and they'll be like, what are you, you going to do with those swords? Isn't that just a waste of money? He's like, hell no, I'm making my own throne. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Hey, that's not far from the truth, dude. <laughs> it really isn't. I, uh, no, I... I'll be honest with you. I've got a sword in every room, so if somebody breaks in, they're not going to have to worry about it. I'll take the hand off so that way the police doesn't have to worry about it. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Well, isn't that what they do in other countries? If you steal from someone, they cut your hand off. Yeah, they cut your hand off. (laughs) So, yeah, no, that's that's really harsh. But, you know, I also, I do, uh, so my, what is it, my... Witcher sword. I actually wear that to Renfest. Really yeah. nice sword. Um, Nick, Nick got to hold it. It's, it's a nice sword, isn't it, Nick? I w- it's absolutely awesome. The downside is you better be at least 5'9", five, 5'10", five, with some, <laughs> some kind of long legs, or the sword's going to drag the ground. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just saying. I tried Whatever. to put it around my waist, and the sword was dragging the ground. I'm like, because oh, no. I, I had to pull the handle forward to keep the sword off the ground. Yeah. It looked like it had a big old tail sticking out. Yeah, Excuse you me, didn't wear it on your back. Talker. I could have. <laughs> we didn't have the harness. I mean, you didn't have the oh, harness. The harness? You, okay. I didn't have the harness to hold it like that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make a horrible comment, Nick. You can shoot me later for it. Right. You're. You need one of those Hobbit swords. I have one. I'm all right with that. <laughs> I have one. Do you? Yes. Not, not a wooden one. Oh, I want okay. the real one. Yeah, I have it. I have it. I bought it at Ridfest too. Uh, did you really? Yes, I did. Okay, Sting? Yep. Uh, yes, uh, if, uh, the Stinger or something like it's that? It's called My Sting. My wife knows yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's Sting. Yes, I have the, that and it's on a stand hanging on the wall. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's your only one? No. Oh, okay. I have the sword if uh, from the Halo game. Okay, yeah. You know, it yeah. Does the whole light up thing. cipher? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't light up, but it's okay. it's that. And what? then I have a uh, the Ranger sword from Lord of the Rings. Yes. That one's pretty big. That one's pretty. I mean, it's long. Yeah, Aragon sword. Yes. I think that's it. Okay. What, Nick? I have no swords. <laughs> well, he's got the one between I'm his legs, list. but <laughs> I'm <short list. laughs> yeah. So, okay, yeah. So that's yeah, that's mine. I actually have a couple of really nice ones, ones that I think people are a little surprised by. So, of course, I have the Witcher sword. Um, I have the Highlander sword. Oh, oh cool! I looked at that one. Yeah, so that one, everyone knows Duncan McLeod from the Clan McLeod. I actually have the, the McLeod sword. The, the original, Irish, the the original Irish Highlander? T- yes. Not that TV bullshit show? Oh, come on, I like the TV show too. So, But I have the two-hander, yes, the Clan McLeod, you know, yes. So it was, it was a really good, it's a nice sword. So I've got, of course, that. I've got a replica Excalibur. I've got a replica... Is it in a stone? No. Oh. It's not in a stone. So. That would be cool. Yes. Well, where would I put the stone in my house? I don't know. It's your house. It's, 
Kids uh, got to grow up and get out. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's one route. When you walk in, him. there's a big stone. There's your, the yeah. Yard killing exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Kids move out. You got a sword room. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, you know, you never, you never know. I may do that. So, um, you know, I may put the sword in it and put a lock on it or something like that to where people on can't pull it out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> sort of like, you know, uh, what is it? Thor's hammer, you know, find Thor's a place. Hammer, yeah, it yeah. sits on the coffee table. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So there's my my crazy, you know, first, you know, boys and their toys. And I, I really do. I've got a couple of, you know, ninja swords, a samurai sword, um, a katana, a pair of size. I've got an insane amount of, you know, different swords that I, I enjoy collecting. And you could call them to- uh, boys and their toys. But it's it, for me, it's collectibles, I guess, more than anything. But, yeah, they're... They're neat. I like wearing them every time. Sometimes I, you know, and I also collect knives. So, but you know, let's let's get on to something more fun. And so I'm gonna take this to Nick because yes. Nick has he, Steven needs to go last. He's got the biggest toy. Who? Yes, Steven <laughs> the has biggest the biggest toy. toy. Yes, you do. Oh come on. <laughs> okay. So my only toy is a 2009 Harley Davidson Street Glide. That I've basically I, I laid it down about a year and a half, two years ago, and I've completely redone it, and it's almost finished. So it's brand spanking new bike. And I so mean, literally new, new fairing, new saddlebags, you know, everything, the whole nine yards, nice. new pipes. Yeah, but see, you know, you keep this motorcycle in Bandera. You don't keep it here, do you? Well, I I do. I bring it back and forth. I have a trailer that I trailer it back and forth, or I could ride it. You know, from Bandera, it's only a four and a half hour run. It's not oh, okay. like ten hour run. Right, right. But you don't like ride it every day. It's mainly for cruising and enjoying yourself, and yeah, yeah, uh, cruising the seawall or Bandera on the mountains. What you like to do? Right. There's there's quite a few places around here. There's a place um, on the other side of uh, the Co- Lake Conroe. It's called Yankee Tavern. Okay, you take a little ride there. It's about a Hour and forty five minute run, go up there, have a burger, you know, come back. Yep. So that's a half a day, you know, interesting run. Then there's a you know, you can go down to Galveston, ride the seawall, or head into Beaumont and then go north in Beaumont. There's some good rides through there. So hit all those little towns I'm from. Yep. East Texas. Coop. Texas. Oh, East Texas. Okay. Nice. Okay. So you any advice for anyone looking to get into the Harley world? Get a vet. <laughs> Shit. Okay. The vet guys will be like, vet. buy a Harley. <laughs> I, I'm seriously thinking about selling my Harley, selling my place in Bandera, and buying me a vet. Really? Why? Yep. So I don't know. You, you can know, buy, you can the, buy aftermarket parts 300% more for the price? It's, it's so funny because the people are, I've been hanging with for the last 20 years, they're all motorcycle riders. So we all, you know, we rode motorcycles. Now the people I'm starting to hang out with, Corvettes. Uh, uh, car My people. buddy Joey, he's a Corvette freak, fanatic. And, you know, I mean, I don't hang with him, but we talk. he talks about it a lot. He's like, you know, get rid of that motorcycle. You're going to kill yourself. You know, I, I hear that all the time. Do you wear a helmet? No, I do not. Have Why you don't been- you wear a helmet? You know? Have Here's you been the in the Corvette Museum? Yes, I have. The one in yes, uh, Kentucky? Oh, no, no, no. There's a... Uh, where did I... There, isn't there one in Mississippi? Mm, I don't know. The only I one know. I know of is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's the big one. Yeah. yeah. That's the one to go see. Yeah. yeah. That's the one where the floor fell and all the Corvettes fell in? Yes. I have pictures of it. I've been there. 60-foot sinkhole or something like that? Yeah. yeah. They actually have a window in the floor that you can look down and see where the cars fell. Dang. The cars still aren't there, though, right? They pulled them out. No, they out. pulled them out there on the, they're on the floor. You can actually see them. Yeah. There's some wow. that they can't even repair. Yeah, they're pretty bad off. They're pretty rare. Yeah. So the reason I do not wear a helmet is I don't want to be a quadriplegic for the rest of my life if I get an accident on a motorcycle. You just if want I'm to be wearing dead. a helmet... I would much rather just call it a day. Done. Really? Yes. 
Oh, wow. I do not want to be a paraplegic or a quadriplegic for the rest of my life. Don't want to be a vegetable. I a helmet. Right. And I got a motorcycle accident. Ouch. I didn't think a helmet would do that in a motorcycle. I'm... <clears throat> I mean, it, if it's a bad enough wreck, it doesn't matter whether you wear a helmet or not. Yeah. But the helmet has saved people's lives, but pair or quadplegic, you know. So yeah. the rest of their life, somebody's feeding them and taking care of them. And I, I choose not to want to do that. Yeah. So I can understand that. And I can understand why you want to switch to a vet. You know, you might pick up some nicer ladies. The cool no, thing about the Bowling Green uh, Corvette Museum, you can buy a Corvette there and they will set your first ser- service up at your 500 mile mark. And I think it's Mississippi or Mississippi. Yeah, wow. you can buy one there. They have a test track in the back that you can drive it on. Yeah. And it's it's, it's awesome. an amazing place, especially for Corvette people. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I want to spend eighty thousand dollars on a car, though. I'm thinking about buying like a C6, an older, you know. But we'll just get my story. <laughs> Let's get my story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have been looking at some of the old box Broncos lately because the new Broncos are coming out. So the old bro- the old box Broncos are pretty popular. Yeah. Although I'm not a Ford guy anymore, but I love the old box Broncos, the late seventy models. God, they're beautiful. Have you seen like the retro stuff they're doing? Yes. So they'll take like a, like the the new Bronco and put the old body on top of. Yes. So you have all the you know the, the power and everything of today, but you got the old school body. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Okay. I always said that if I won the lotto, I'd call up that guy. What's his name? That you can go up to him and for whatever amount of money he'll build whatever you tell him to. You know, from all state of the art top of line. What was that guy's name? It, it, I don't know. His, Initials are RR, Grease Monkey, or something like that. Oh, Richard Rollins. Richard Rollins. Yeah, Gas Monkey. Gas Monkey, thank Gas you. Monkey. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, the car guy over here, he really knows. Yeah, I yeah. knew you would, because <laughs> some guy walked into his office on one of his shows and handed him $70,000, and he built an old-style Bronco <laughs> from scratch. Yeah. I mean, they bent the parts and did, you know, built the, and it was a, you know, a Corvette engine in it or something like that. You know, it was awesome. That's yeah. what I would do if I had a lot of, for sure. And hey, have one of those. Hey, Nick, I, I wasn't sure if you noticed this, but have you read Steven's shirt? Yes. I was going to say something before we started recording. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to point that out. For those I don't you, wear this to work, too, by the way. <laughs> you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Casual Friday? Yeah. The shirt's coming out. Yeah. So the this, this shirt yeah. literally reads, no, I will not fix your computer. So it's really great for three IT guys. I'm going to have to find a shirt like that. That's going to be <laughs> right. hilarious. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to say that earlier, and I just got sidetracked. But, you know. But, yeah. So So you're switching out. You're thinking about selling your Harley and switching over. To a vet, but even then, any tips for future, you know, generations that want to ride a motorcycle? You know, that's a. I'm glad you said that because the 75th anniversary Sturges rally that was in 2015. Yeah. Now I went to that one. That one, they there's a whole bunch of data on it. The fact that. It was the largest rally. I mean, Sturgis is always the biggest rally in, in the world, but this one topped it all because of the baby boomers and the beginning of the Gen X people understand the, the wind therapy, riding a motorcycle. The newer generations don't understand it as much, and it'll never be as big. So it's five or six weeks long. The main week, which is bike week, they had 1.2 million people at the rally. Oh, wow. It'll never get that big again. The biggest one prior to that was a little over 750,000. And now they're running it, well, because of COVID, the first one dropped out after COVID was like 250, 270,000. And I think the last year was closer to 400,000. So you're talking about two or three, four times less from the 75th anniversary, which was 2015. So I got a question for you, though. If 
Sturgis allowed people to bring their mopeds? Do you think they get their numbers back up? <laughs> yes, they no, you no. Everybody that has a motorcycle usually has a little pull start lawnmower with ape hangers and they're always riding around the trailer parks because that's you know I know. But I mean it's it, but their stuff up. I I see mopeds making a really serious it used to be a big European thing, but I'm seeing it more and more in the States. I'm seeing more mopeds and more of that stuff. You want to know why? That's because mopeds can go 70 miles an hour. Do you want to know why? Why? Because you don't have to have a driver's license. What? Some, some states you don't have to have a drive because, you know, the, the size of the motor is real small. And so you don't have to have a driver's license to get it. Oh. Uh. Even though it might huh. do 60 miles an hour. Yeah, they do. They're, it's nothing for them to go 60, 70, 80 miles an hour now. Yeah, and you got a generation coming up that don't really get a not driver's license. Well, yeah, that's true. And I will say this. You can ride the moped in the HOV lane, so, you know, yep. you don't have to worry about that. You know? Unless that bus breaks down. Yeah, well, you can always go around the bus. It's a moped. You better be able to go around the bus. <laughs> and see, you know what they used to say when we were all young? What? They're fun to ride, but you don't want your friends to see you on them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. I, I think I vaguely remember somebody saying that about a girl one time. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but, Lord. you know, Har- Harley people, they're their own culture. Yes. You know, they are just, they are, I'm not going to say clan. It's a culture. I mean, you know. What? It's it's definite culture. If you yeah. own a Harley and you see somebody on an Indian or a Honda or a Yamaha or something like that, it's like, you know, and even uh, even the guys that I was riding with for years, every once in a while, well, one of the guys that we ride with, he refuses to own a Harley. So he's always got a Yamaha or a Honda, something just, you know, something like that. Right. And so we, every time we'd go for a ride, there'd be 8, 10, 12, 20, 30, whatever Harleys in his Yamaha or his Honda, whatever he was riding. And everybody would give him crap about it. <laughs> and then we'd all go ride and have a great time, you know, but we'd yeah. still give him crap about it. Now, I used to have a what, Honda Nighthawk. When I was younger. So, and I rode that thing every day to work. Let me just tell you, that was painful. In the winter, oh my gosh, that was painful. So, 30 miles, one way. Yeah, I know you're making fun of me, but holy crap. No, no, and it didn't have a fairing or it didn't have any wind block. No. Just straight right yeah. to the face. Yeah, straight right oh. to the face. I did wear a helmet. You know, but, and I still have the helmet, but yeah, dude, oh my goodness, you want to talk about cold. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I actually had an eight, a couple 18 wheelers almost run me off the road because, of course, they don't ever see you. And I'm just like, really? Come on. You know, but okay. No, don't care. Yeah, I know. They don't care. Okay. So we're going to well, move on not, to the, not, huh? not, not all of them. Not no, all There's eight. a lot of them that are good. No, there's some good 18-wheeler drivers. I won't disagree but with you. But that's, that's a two-way street with, with the 18-wheelers. I know. You know. I know. But, you know, here in Houston, because there's so many, it's yeah. really hard to tell the good ones from the bad ones. That's true. Right. I mean, I'm let's just be honest. Those guys, if, that, if they put their blinker on, I'll slow down and flash and let yep. them in. They, if yes. they give me a flashback, I give that's them room. Yeah. I give them room. Right. No, and, and I agree with you. As long as, you know, they actually you know, do the blinker. If they don't, you know, if they, if you don't see a blinker and then you're halfway between them and they try to swerve over, it's like, right. dude, what the hell? I'm here, you know? So, no, I've, I've yeah, encountered very my comfortable when you're on a three lane highway going 70, 75, and there's an 18 wheeler on either side of you and you're on a bike. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be so uncomfortable. It's either get on it and get out of the way or back off and let them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in a couple of those situations, and I'm like, this doesn't feel good. I yeah, better no. do something. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, that, that is like, uh, what is it, Fast and Furious, whenever the, I think it was number three. Or no, no, it was number two. Remember when the Mustang got crushed the between Celine the two? The Mustang slid yeah. under the trailer? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. No. Ooh. So, 
Yeah, I'm the kind of guy that wants to get in front of them because I don't want them throwing a rock up and hit me in the head. Well, that's, that's what true. I did. I went from 70 to about 110 just to get, you know, <laughs> to get away from them. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't throw a rock at I me. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. Okay, so we're going to move on to, I mean, we're not going to finish with this, but, you know, we're going to move on to the Mr. Racer here. Boys Mr. and Racer. his toys. Come on, dude. I know you're racing. I mean, you were at the What's... you were at the, the the Sam Houston racing the the moped, not the moped, but the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> it, no, was, was at, it was the was mini. At, uh, it was the mini. I was at Gulf Greyhound Park. Gulf Greyhound Park. Sorry, I do autocross. So yeah, yeah, but it was the mini. It wasn't the moped. I'm just just teasing, folks. What's autocross? Autocross is a lot more funner than driving in a straight straight line. So oh, autocross so it's a track? is yeah, it's it's cones set up in a big parking oh. lot. Is what I do. So you don't really get out of second gear, but you read the shit out of it. <laughs> Are you drafting and drifting? No. Slide? No, no drifting. No, you're not drifting. drifting? Why not? Do call it? They don't allow that, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Now, if you t- get too aggressive and slide, that's okay. But if you're intentionally going around corners trying to drift, yeah, they'll call you out. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not so, a drifting event. Okay, so uh, so you were, this weekend, you were drifting in the mini. No, I'm just kidding. No, I was uh, not drifting in the mini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Rachel was drifting in the mini. Yes. <laughs> it was Rachel's turn to race. She was actually quite excited, the mini, too. What's the mini? You guys, I don't so, know anything about it. All right. So about a year and a half ago, I bought my first Shelby Mustang. Oh, Shelby. 2017 uh, GT350. So it's 5.2 liter uh, Voodoo is what they call it with the six-speed. And it's got all sorts of intercoolers and everything on it. Wait, you is know. this stuff that you put on or stuff no, that you bought? No, it came it with? this way. Oh, okay. It came this way. Oh, you bought it t- t- tricked out. No, it came from the factory this way. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's got an oil cooler, it's got a transmission cooler, rear diff cooler. Oh, yeah, this thing is it's made for autocrossing. Straight from the dealership. Wow. Okay, so. for, eight, for $80,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, I'm trying to be nice here, okay? Somebody could go yeah. look it up. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I bought it used. It was had 1,300 miles on. So it was bought in Dorito, Louisiana. I say the little lady bought it. Drove it to the grocery store in the church on Sunday. Parked it back in the garage. You're kidding me. Oh, wait, 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 nope. wait, wait. Where in Dorito? Dorito, Louisiana. Yeah, but where in Dorito? There's a Ford dealership. They bought it brand new oh. in 2017. Okay. Nice. And then I bought it a year and a half ago, and it only had 1,300 miles on it. Okay. Gee. You bought yeah. it fr- from DeRitter, or did you buy it from? No. I bought it in Alvin. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. From a dealership in Alvin. Uh, okay. Uh, only, so. only reason I'm asking is because... Uh, go ahead. What color is it? It's white with blue stripes. Nice. Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like the old school look. So, it yeah. does come... Sorry, Jeff. Mine Jeff. has the Recaro seats. Was yeah. like a four thousand dollar upgrade. Yeah, so it's got the racing seats. Um, it's pretty nice. So have you done any mods to it? Uh, yeah. So I ran, I ran it last year in autocross. Um, I kept it in the um the novice group. I'm trying to think of the class I was in. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, it's right at the edge. If you do anything to it, it bumps you out of that class. Literally. So oh. I decided I'm going to flip it to run E85. So all I did was get a box, and it has a flex fuel sensor. So when you put E85 in a tank, it adjusts the, the flow rate of the fuel injectors so you can run E85. Well, that bumped me out of the class and put me into what they call KMC, which is where your modified Mustang sit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Sunday was my first time with my KMC. really beef it up to keep it going, right? Yeah, yeah, there's some pretty good, there's some pretty good cars in that in that group. So it was pretty wow. cool. 
Didn't you say you had some parts sitting in the garage waiting to install? Yeah, I've got the tow hook I need to install on the front bumper. So uh, if I ever have to have it towed, they can just hook onto the hook and pull it onto the flatbed. And then, um, what else? I got some speakers I got to put in, because I hate the stock speakers. Um, I think that's it. Oh, okay. I don't have much for it. No other mods, though. No, this one I kept pretty, pretty tame. Okay. Pretty tame, unlike my last Mustang. So. This isn't your everyday vehicle, correct? No. It's just in the garage. I drive it to work once a week and then autocross it. So. Right. So when you first bought it and parked in the garage, did you sleep in it that night? Almost. <laughs> it still had the new car smell. <laughs> if you believe that, it still had the new car smell. Oh, my gosh. I took it to work I and I was showing I bought it. this Harley. I walked out to the garage like 10 times that day and hugged it. <laughs> oh, uh. man. <laughs> you are hilarious. But yeah, I took it to work one day, and the, there's a guy that drives a Camaro, and he was checking it out, and he opens the door and he goes, "Holy shit! You can still smell the new car, you know, the new car smell in it, you know." And it's like this is 2020 or 2021, <laughs> you know. That's crazy. So, yeah, as you said, yeah, a little old lady owned it. That's what I say. I mean, they if you look at the Carfax report, they didn't hardly do anything. I think it went in for one oil change, huh. and that's it. Okay. Well, but it, it was miles. bought into Ritter, yeah. Louisiana. and Bought then, into Ritter, Louisiana. And then in, somehow made its way to Alvin. Yes. Interesting. Yep. Only yep. reason I asked about DeRitter is because I graduated high school in DeRitter, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but it's, it's been fun. Uh, my wife uh, is a driver in uh, autocross also. So she was actually a passenger last year because she can't drive the Mustang because it's a six speed. So because it's we, a stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest, because it's a stick. <laughs> but uh, January we bought her. I know, I know. Sorry, Rachel. Anyway, <laughs> January we bought her a uh, 2018 Mini Cooper, Mini Cooper S. So wow. she's got her own little race car. Now she drive. That one back and forth to work, or is that just her race car? Uh, no, she drives it when she wants. Okay, but it's her race car. Okay, yeah, she loves it. So now it's not it's not a stick; it's automatic. It's automatic, but it has the manual shift option. I was going to say, has it got paddles? I don't, no, I don't it doesn't have the paddles. You actually okay. have to move the shifter over, and then it, you can shift it up and down. Yeah, it's like, like my car. Have a clutch? It doesn't have a clutch. No, it yeah, doesn't have a no clutch. clutch. Yeah, there's no clutch. So but, yours does. Yeah, yeah, my, my Mustang does. His Mustang's old school. Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, I love old school stick. Yeah. You know. Well, I got a chance to drive around uh, a 2012 45th anniversary Camaro that was a stick. And I'm going to tell you what, man, in traffic, it'll kill you. But, yeah. yeah. And I kept telling her. Park this thing in the garage. You both make enough money. Buy your new car. <laughs> or buy you a different car. And she's like, no. And I got online or something like that. And a 20-year-old Camaro was whatever 20th anniversary. And they sold that thing for over $300,000. And I'm going, you see that? Yeah. See that? Hold this thing for 20 years with 10,000 miles on it and see mm. how much you get for it. Yeah. I bought it to drive it. Okay. Well, okay. she ended up selling. Yep. She sold. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll just, uh, I'll be happy to get my truck back whenever I can get, <laughs> get this car paid off. I want my truck yeah, again. My last Mustang was a 2012 GT. And my wife wanted to drive it, so it had to be automatic. Even though I, oh, wanted, wow. to, I wanted to stick. And she was like, no, I want to drive it. You know. So I, I modded it out. Oh, it was she just has 450 horsepower at the wheel. She just has to practice. <laughs> yeah. You have to teach her how to drive a stick. Yeah. No, nah, I'm not going to teach her. She got a Mini Cooper. To, I don't think he has the patience. I think that's what he's trying to tell us. He doesn't have the patience. <laughs> so, he doesn't want to I don't, I don't think you want to try to teach somebody how to drive a stick on something that's got 525 horsepower. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, yeah, okay. That's a valid point. You know, an old yeah. ranger. 
You know, there you go. Two thousand dollar, you know, <laughs> real four cylinder ranger. Yeah, there you go. Motherfucking Ford Ranger. <laughs> Motherfucking Ford Ranger. Get one ranger. of the old Ford pickup trucks with three on the tree. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you push the clutch, it goes. Yeah. I forget my grandpa's truck was like it was a Ford three on the tree, and every time you push that clutch in, it would just squeak. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I didn't think nothing of it back then, but now I'm like, oh my God, if I had that truck right now, I would love that sound. You know, the sad thing is, is that's how I learned how to drive a stick is I actually, my parents had a, a V a truck with three on the tree and that's literally, wow. yeah, that was my first time driving a, so that was, it was pretty funny. Oh, wow. So yeah, no, 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 but yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Okay. So we, we've talked about motorcycles. We've talked about. Mustangs, um, of course, you know trucks are always going to be cool. Um, we've vets. talked, we've talked about vets. We've talked about swords. Okay, what about what? What's something else? Anything? Anything else? Uh, any other toys that uh, you know you guys have that you want to share? I that... got a bass boat. Oh, I knew you had a bass boat. There you go. Yep. Nick used to have. Well, it used to be a ski had boat. A ski boat. He had a ski yeah, boat. No, I've got. I've got a, a bass tracker bass boat. It's yeah. uh, 18 foot. I bought it in 2015. I was yeah. wondering what happened to that. You don't talk about going fishing much anymore since you're racing. Yeah, it, it, it's at my brother in law's house. Oh. Couldn't park the Shelby and the Mini Cooper in the garage if the boat sits there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Got to give up some toys to get some toys. Yeah. But we still like to go fishing. Every once in a while. Every once in a while, yeah. When it's not 100 degrees. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the only thing bad about aluminum boats. You know, you get, you're out there on the water in the middle of August, yeah. and you might as well be baking in a skillet. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. Now, now, Nick used to have well, the ski boat, but didn't it have right. a 357 engine in it? Or, no, 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 357. Uh, huh? It, it, had a, it had a 350. 350 engine in it. It was a Chevy 350 engine in it, and it was carbureted. You know, it was an older boat. So, yeah. Oh, big loud motherfucker. But it was, it's marine tricked out. I mean, it's really quiet. But like I said, it's marine tricked out. I mean, I can't remember what they call it, but because I've been out of that realm for so long. And that boat, I, I don't, I think maybe one time when I had it for two years, everything worked and it ran fine. Always had something wrong with it. Either the, it had a stereo system with 2,000, uh, two 1,000 watt amplifiers, and it had gigantic speakers all over it, and the big, you know, wakeboard bar. Let's not talk bit. about car audio. We start talking <laughs> about car audio, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole nother Tell world. You. Yeah, he, I got trophies. Yeah, I got trophies. See, I wish I'd have known you back then, because this thing was a disaster. It was. They wow. did. It, it, I mean, when it worked, it was awesome. But when you know, I actually took it in, had a guy work on it, got it back up and running, took it out, had a great weekend with it. Two weekends later, took it back out, didn't work. Oh, you know, wow. So it was like that. I got so sick and tired of it. And I put it up for sale, and some guy called me from San Antonio and said, I'll buy it sight unseen. Oh, wow. For the exact same price that I paid for it two years prior. I said, Come get it. And he did. <laughs> I met him at the bank. He handed me the cash. I went in the bank, paid it off because I only owed like eight hundred or a thousand dollars on it. Paid it off. They handed me the title. I signed it over to him, and he left. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it was a pretty good deal. But I mean, it I probably dropped seven or eight grand in the two years that I had it because every oh, wow. time I'd, I'd have to put it in the shop for something, it was a thousand dollars. It, honest to God, it was a thousand dollars every time I put it in the shop. Wow. Rebuild a carburetor, thousand bucks. I mean, they would find other things wrong with it. You know, oh, if always. my buddy Joey would have been living here, I would have never had to take it to the shop not once because he could have fixed it for me. I'm just not that mechanically inclined. Wow. His wife well, you got through a silence out right after that one. I was gonna <laughs> well no, I was gonna say your hands work well with the ladies, just not with the engines. 
Exactly. <laughs> Studied more with the ladies than I did on engines. engines. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody thinks porn is for pleasure. No, study it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, my goodness. Amazed at what you could learn by watching some videos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. Anyway, yeah. I mean, if you want to get in the car, car audio world, shit, dude. I've been in it since high school. 90, wow. 1989, 1990. Many trucks came on the scene, started having the big stereo system. You know, woofers in the bed of the truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's when I got See, into it. See, that's interesting when you, because it kind of caught me off guard when you said you bought this car. And you didn't like the speakers in it. And I'm thinking, a car like that's got to come with Infinity or Bose no. or some big it name is, brand. It's stamped Made in China. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, yeah. Really? They're crappy. They're crappy. Okay, so what's your favorite? And you don't you don't buy a shell a Shelby for their stereo, but I'd like to at least have some decent speakers <laughs> so it sounds you decent. You know. I mean, come on, like I need I wanted a diesel truck because I have an R V and I put my bike in it and I can travel with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I bought a used Denali and of course it's got the Bose system in it and all that stuff and it's nice and it sounds good. But you would think a Shelby would come with a Bose sound system or infinity. I mean, mm -mm. those are the only two that I know of that are really good sounding. No. Yeah, no. And then they have that new B and O. Uh, stereo system they have, yeah, it's crap too. Wow. Yeah, I have a Ford Edge ST, and it's in it, and it's like, yeah, I've got ten grand worth of stereo equipment in my garage. I'm fixing to put in it, <laughs> taking care of it. <laughs> oh, so that's your everyday uh, vehicle? Is your Ford Edge? Yeah. Huh. Oh. You'll get yeah. rid of the truck. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay, so any other fun toys? Guns. Oh, okay. Now you're talking my world again. Because we went to the gun Sweet. rage out last year. Yep. So. Guns. Okay. Okay, so, um, Steven, guns. Um, you don't have to. My wife has one. Your wife has one? I'm more of a compound bow guy myself. Okay. No, that's it. That's still, yep. still that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how many pounds? Uh, I think I got them at 55 right now. Okay. I got two. I got two of them. Okay. And you go hunting? I try. If somebody invites me. Oh. <laughs> Talk about an expensive hobby. Good <laughs> it Lord. It is. You know, like lease, to lease a land and all that. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Oh, yeah. And then okay. when you do all that, you got to get lucky enough to lease a piece of property that's going to have animals on it. Yep. And not people poaching and breaking into yep. your... Just got too much for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what makes me nervous about it. Yeah. So I, yeah. Go ahead, Jay. I was gonna say uh, I have a friend who goes to the national forest, and that's where he goes. He gets a permit to actually go. Yeah. Texas know. has uh, some free hunting land. Yes, but you still got to watch out for people on. You uh, got to wear a lot of orange. Yeah, yeah a lot of orange. Do. But he he does it on bow weekend, not on rifle weekend. Yeah. So yeah, bows bow usually only. come out before the rifle does. Yeah, and so those are always more fun for him. He does bow hunting, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I did that for a while, too, and I guess they don't like me. They don't get close enough. But <laughs> yeah, they got to get, like, 20 camp. yards. <laughs> yeah. I got on a deer lease in South Texas, Zapata. I mean, literally, my stand, I could see the border of Mexico. Oh, okay? wow. Or the river that runs yeah. what they the call Rio. it. Yeah, Rio. Okay. I decided to write down everything that it cost me to be on that deer lease for the one season. Everything. I'm talking about food, liquor, clothes, gas. If I had blew a tire on the way, everything that I spent on the trips back and forth for one season, it cost me $8,800. Yeah. It's corn, bullets, you know, everything. Did you have a spray to kill your cost, scent? Go, Oh yeah, I did all that. Yeah, hung, you know, I had the urine and all that drama. <clears throat> For eighty eight hundred dollars, I did not kill a trophy buck. Oh. I got two oh, and you know four or five pigs, so I got meat. Yeah, but for eighty eight hundred dollars, 
Pigs are free yeah. in Texas. That's what I'm saying. I can go right around the corner and get a doe for $150. Yeah. You know, literally just walk out in somebody's backyard and shoot a doe and hand them, you know, 150, 200 bucks and be done with it. But for $8,800, I could spend a weekend at a high game fence ranch and kill two trophy bucks. Yep. Which so, I've and never they will done put in you my... in front of it. Yes. They'll have two little guys run out with it on a, a leash. If you want to <laughs> yeah, shoot this one right here, we're going like to let some it go. It's like Jurassic Park shit. Shoot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And you're in the back of a truck, and it's warm, and you got a coffee maker yep. there, and you yep. know. And then yeah. you go bang, or you know, you let it go, and kill yeah, it, you, and they go, okay, we're gonna chop it and up. And then they, you pick up your coffee cup, they take you back to the house and cook your breakfast, yep. and they field dress it and everything. Yep. Yeah. See, I I probably hunted pretty hard for maybe 15 years, and if I spent that kind of money every year. Look at all that money I wasted. I don't know if you'd say wasted because it was a hobby. Did I have a great time? Did I meet a lot of, you know, cool friends and took the kids out and taught them a little bit about hunting and, you know, being out by the campfire and telling stories and all that stuff. So, yeah, I, it was a great experience. Memories Man, are, 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 was probably the but, only value there. Right. But yeah. $8,800 worth, yeah. you know. That was a lie. Yeah. yeah. So I got out of, that's when I got out of the business. I still kept the guns though, so I've got a heavy barrel 308 with. I almost bought a Swarovski scope at the time they were the the hottest thing going. There was another company called Kales that had the same glass that Swarovski did for half the price, so I put a Kales scope on it. Where literally 30 minutes after dark, I can still see a deer 100 yards away. Nice. Wow. So, and I can, this, it's a beautiful weapon. It's a Remington 700, 770 and a 308 caliber. And then I started buying pistols. So I've got a 357 nickel plated revolver. I have a 308 SIG Sour. I have two nine millimeters. One's a Ruger. And the other one, it's funny because Jay's got a nine millimeter. And when we went to the range, I shot his, and then I shot my favorite Walter P. And I don't like my Walter anymore, <laughs> man. Shooting his was so smooth. And it's a what? It's a Kimber. It's a Kimber. And I don't even and, like it. Well, if if it didn't jam so much, I would like it. It jams a little more than I want. Time. Yeah, yeah. My Walter P. has never jammed. But it's not as smooth as that Kimber. No, the Kimber was an easy shot. I won't disagree with you. Yeah. I just don't like the fact that it jams a little more than it should. You know, yeah. that's my big thing. And so, yeah, I bought, what was it, last year, at end of 2020 was when I bought that one. Because remember, it's so for most people who don't know, um, of course, my son took his life. He, he did it with a gun. So, um, a rule for my house is I would never have a gun in my house again until I could secure it responsibly. Well, I, I did secure it responsibly. So most oh, people, okay. yeah, I actually had everything in a gun case under lock and key. So, but my son took an ax to the gun case and I remember you telling me that yeah. and broke it open. So, you know, that's, I wanted to make sure you couldn't take an ax and, so I have a 500 pound safe now, you know, okay. it's empty. It's 500 pounds. Just to give you an idea, oh. this thing is, sh Oh my God, him and I spent six months looking for that damn thing. Damn. Yes, we did. Yes, we they did. did. And Both of us were on the phone almost every other day going, Hey, I found this at such and such, or I'd go somewhere and take a picture and send it to him. And he's like, Oh, I saw that one here. You know, we did that for God, I don't know how long. Yeah. <laughs> and, but this one I found, it was a hell of a deal. 24 gun safe for $500. It was a hell of a deal on sale. So I bought it, and then that's when I bought the Kimber. And so it doesn't have the retina, the, the retina scan or the fingerprint? No. You just got to put a code in, or is it the old school? No, it's a code. It's a code, okay. but it also has a key. But the key is not in my house, and that's the key point. So... 
none of my none of my kids, even myself, none of my kids know the combination, and they can't grab the key. The keys it, it is in another location. It's a separate place. Yeah. Yeah. You do I mean, you do somebody else has the combination, right? Yes. You oh, yeah. cannot take an axe to this, right? No. no. Like it's metal or something. No, it, and and if four people broke into his house, it would be a struggle for them to pick that thing up and carry it out. Oh wow. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Empty. Yes, I mean you got to figure it's 500 pounds empty. Imagine yeah. how much it weighs with all the ammo, the guns, mm, and the knives that yeah. I have in there. So, because I'm also a knife collector, and so I've got probably I don't know seven different types of knives or buck knives in there. That, that you know, one of the knives I have is like a foot and a half long. Is that the Rambo knife? <laughs> No, that one's the actually crocodile Dundee knife. No, it's actually longer than that one too. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, but yeah. They call that a machete. Yeah, a machete. machete. Yeah, there you go. It's not a machete, but that's funny. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. So I will tell you this though. La- uh, yeah. So me and Nick. Oh, it was like April or May of last year. Went to the gun range, right? When was yeah. that? It was like April, I think, of last year. Well, we went to the yeah. gun range. And so I brought, of course, um, Mike Kimber, um, a 41, uh, old fashioned six shooter revolver. Oh, wow. Really beautiful weapon. Nick shot it, didn't you, Nick? That yes, thing I was, did. that was beautiful, wasn't it? Dude, it was. but it, it's got yeah. a really good make kick you want to be it. a cowboy? <laughs> dude, it's got a case like a cowboy. That's what I'm saying. You said it's right? a six shooter. Yeah, dude. But yeah, now when we shot that thing, it's got a serious. It's a serious, yeah, and it leaves a serious hole too. It's, it's, oh, wow. yeah, no, it's a, it's a good, good bullet. But um, the funniest thing about that day, so of course Nick brought a pistol, and I'll get there, dude. I'll get there. I, I know. I'm like, tell the story. Tell the story. I know. It's so. I, I could not believe it. It's one of those things that just once in a lifetime happens. This is too good. Okay, so of course you know we shoot the forty one. We shoot the pistols. My buddy Eddie comes, he brings his nine, we shoot it, we shoot Nick's, you know, so we we bought some extra ammo so we could just kind of be shooting each other's weapon, you know, I think Eddie brought his 380 or 38, I don't remember, maybe it was 38, 357, or was that you that brought the 350? No, no, I didn't have my... my Yeah, Eddie brought his 357, but it also, yeah, so I think we did that, but yeah, it was, we had a lot of fun. This is the first time that Jay had actually shot a gun. Oh, wow. I mean, I think he shot a 22 or a BB gun, but it's the, the first. cricket in his hand? Yeah, exactly. But he actually shot the Kimber, <laughs> and he, he did a really good, you know, it was, um, you know, it, it kicked back on him and he cut on him because of the way he was holding it. But other than that, I mean, he did really, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming over. Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, he did a really good job. You know, he held it well and, you know, not any problems. So we had a really good time. But the really kicker here. Oh, my God. So um, my dad, of course, um, last year is he's getting older. So him and my mom essentially make a deal that they're going to give all my dad's guns away except for one. He has one at the house for self-defense. But all his rifles, everything. So, you know, they they put in a policy, you know, this gun goes to this kid, this gun goes to this kid, or, you know, or, you know, um, we're going to start with the oldest and you choose your gun from here. We're going to start with the youngest and you choose, depending on what it was, okay? And that, that's kind of the routine. So I got... um my dad's number one rifle for hunting deer was a thirty out six with a scope. Beautiful gun. Love it. Pretty. Okay. It really is. It's a pretty gun. It had been sitting in his closet, not in a case, but sitting in the closet in the corner mm. for about 30 years. Okay. So, of course, it's been sitting in this closet for 30 years. So the first thing I do is I take it over to Carter's Country, and I'm like, guys, can you just clean it up? Clean it up, yeah. Yes, check it out. Make sure the barrel's good, and it'll shoot clean. Sure, not a problem. Okay, get it clean. Me and Nick 
and they did a damn good job on that rifle too. Oh, they it really looks, did. It looked really nice. Yeah, I agree. They so they they cleaned the barrel. They blued it back to where it looked almost brand new. Yeah, yeah they really did. Yeah. So of course, you know, I'm after it's clean. I'm like, you know, they've inspected it. It's safe to shoot. So I'm like, okay, you know, uh, we've we've finished all of the you know pistol shooting, kind of getting Jay warmed up to you know shooting a. Um, you know, a gun, because I, I want him to be able to move forward in his life to being not afraid of guns. Yes, my son used a gun to take his life, but the gun isn't what killed him. The gun couldn't have killed him unless he actually pulled the trigger himself. So, you know, I'm not afraid of guns, okay? That's just, it's not me. So I got to teach my kids that. So we brought Jay for that. So we go down and we set the gun up, and I'm sitting here. Nick's laughing at me because I'm sitting here holding the gun, holding the rifle. I'm not even using the little thing that you balance it on to make sure you get a clean shot. I'm He's wanting to stand there like this oh, and shoot. I hold it. Like, no, I'm no, no, no. free this holding thing it. Been shot in 30 years, dude. <laughs> I said, you need to get down. You need to get, your, you need to get your sandbags situated. You need to sit down. You need to rest the gun and point it at the target. And I'm going to sit next to you with the spotting scope and watch it i still didn't put it on the sandbags though <laughs> the back the front you did not the back not the back okay that's a fair point the front did i did okay so i'm when i'm sighting a gun, when i'm sighting a gun in that thing is rested and all you have to do is pull the trigger you know what i'm saying because i want to make sure that it's not me that's pulling it left right up or down and this thing hadn't been shot in 30 years and i'm thinking you need to secure that thing where it's by itself, and then put your shoulder up against it tight and look, make your spot, and then, you know, squeeze the trigger. Uh, That's what I'm thinking. No. No, man. I, I, <laughs> I, I know. I'm difficult. I know. Because I'm sitting there this wanting to I hold drink. it. Huh? This is why I drink. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, but seriously, I, I'm sitting there, and I'm still holding the front of it. But I am letting it sit somewhat on the sandbags. But you can yes. see, I'm literally, I mean, the back side of it, I'm holding it up, moving it around, doing, siding it up. And, and Nick, I'll let you say your line, because this was pretty damn funny. But I'm sitting there, okay, and I, I'm literally, I'm scoping it up. And I'm, I'm like a little paranoid, because I don't know how bad this is going to be. Okay? So Nick's watching. And I take fresh the, sight, hundred yards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh hundred yards. Fresh start, hundred yards on a target. I pull the trigger, and this is what I hear. Click. Put that fucking thing away. <laughs> Put that fucking gun away. I'm not exaggerating. You got your two inch, four inch, six inch circles, right? He's inside the two inch circle. First shot. 30 years of never being fired and been cleaned and not bore sighted. Oh, wow. Yeah. I said, put, put that fucking gun away. It probably it away. would have been in, if it was in an inch circle, it probably would have been in the inch circle too. Yes. It yep. was that dead on. It, it wow. was, I mean, literally almost touching the crosshairs at a hundred yards for thir I, I was just put the gun away, put it away. You don't need to shoot anymore. So you I know? shoot it again. In the, in the two inch mark. Yeah, he's still inside the two inch circle. Shoot it again. Still in. So I'm like, okay, if you're gonna shoot it, I want to shoot it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so puff, puff, pass, dude. Puff, puff, pass. <laughs> yeah, <That's> and, like, <laughs> and you know what, Nick? All three of his shots inside the two inch circle. There you go. Dude. Unbelievable. I mean, smooth as silk. It's a 30 odd six, so I figured this thing was just going to kick the crap out of me, right? It didn't. It wasn't a heavy barrel. It was just a standard type 30 odd six rifle that had been cleaned and not bore sighted. I mean, I don't know if they took the scope off or not. They had to have to clean it that good. I mean, it looked, they, they did a phenomenal job. They might job. have sighted it in. They might have. They did a damn good <laughs> job because all of us that shot it were easily within the four inch. I mean, all of us. Okay, I will say this. So, Nick, sh I shot it three times. Nick shot it three times. 
Jay Jr. had never shot a rifle before, and all three of his shots were in the two-inch circle. Oh, wow. I shot it three more times. The first one was in the two-inch circle. The next two were out, and Nick was like, it could have been getting hot, and because we had shot in it a lot. So, you know. Yeah. And so we weren't waiting a lot of time between shots. No, we weren't. So those last two shots were within the four, just not, but they were on the edge of the two. Don't get me wrong. They weren't far outside that two, but yeah. So Jay, who'd never shot a rifle before scoped it in and in the two inch all three times. So you had three different people with nine different shots and they were all within the two inch. I mean, just nothing but solid. We still have the target to prove it, too. Wow. Yeah. That was awesome. That was awesome, I will tell you. But, yeah, Nick was like, put it down. And I'm like, is it that bad? He's like, put the damn thing down. <laughs> You're going to shoot that good the first time after 30 years? Just be done. <laughs> well, yeah. it, you know, I, I hadn't shot a rifle in quite a few years. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. So for me to pick up that rifle, and the rifle hadn't been used in 30 years, and I, I probably would say it's 20 years since I shot a rifle, that's pretty impressive shot. I mean, you know, a six-inch target, that'll put a deer down. No, any, yeah. Any, you know? And, yeah, every one of us that shot it, it was, it was wow. I was like, what the, just put it away. <laughs> <laughs> That was impressive. That was that's a, that's a really good gun right there. Yes, it is. So. My sister bought um, a two seventy, and we went to sight it in, and I I bought the bore sights and did all that, and we'd shoot, and then we it would be off like on the edge of the target. So we tightened everything down and took the scope off, put it back on, rebore sighted, and then we got took it down to the range to the guy and had him bore sight it. For you know, twenty five bucks, and still everywhere. Oh wow! So she's like, I don't want this gun, and she just hand gave it to me. It's in there. I still have it, but I don't shoot it. Oh wow! But it's a, it's just a two seventy Savage, and there's got to be something wrong with the scope. Yeah, I think inside of the scope, no matter what you do, however you adjust it, I think the glass isn't tight. It falls off or something, and maybe you need a new scope. Well, yeah, I won't buy a new scope for that thing. No, you got a better gun. Yeah, oh, I got a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then shotguns. I got a good story about a shotgun. <laughs> I'll tell it quick. Okay, so I go to Ducks Unlimited, and my brother comes up to me. And he goes, "Hey, bid on this gun because it's gonna go." And I, I never heard of it. So I bid up with this other guy. We get to back and forth, and and I said, "I'll go up to six hundred dollars." Well, uh. I bid 580 and he didn't go 600. So I ended up paying 580 bucks for this shotgun. So I knew I was going to be in trouble with the wife because I was married. So I called her and I said, I'm on my way home, babe. I made a mistake and bought a shotgun and it cost $580. I went home, went to bed, woke up before she got up and left and went to the deer lease for the weekend. <laughs> when I came home, I walked in the house. There were brand new court curtains on the big back window. And I said, you got new curtains? And she says, yep. And it costs $600. Because if you can spend $600, so can I. So I'm thinking this rifle cost me 1200 bucks because of my stupidity bidding on it. So I look it up, and it's a Charles Daly semi-automatic 12-gauge. You can buy them online right now for $237. Oh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> That's my prize shotgun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's cost me a lot of money and some anguish. You know, yeah. I didn't get any for a couple of weeks after that. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> now, I will tell you this. Eddie, who, who's who been on the show, he did the crazy first dates, Eddie version, Eddie edition. Um, Eddie has an 1100 shotgun. And he's. I've been looking for a shotgun, 12 gauge for the house for... Um, you know, just for, you know, intruders or whatever, if, you know, cutting off their hand doesn't work, you know, I can at least pull them, you know, fill them full of slugs, whatever you want to, uh, anyway, <laughs> but the point is, is I've been looking for a shotgun, but I didn't want to spend a, a huge amount of money on one. Um, so we were keeping an eye. Well, Eddie, 
he's in Conroe, and he's um, off of uh, 105, and he goes by this pawn shop because they have this 357 long barrel that he wants. And so he ended up getting the 41, not the 357. So it's a dirty, hairy, long barrel 41. He actually bought it. Uh, but when he was there, they had a 1400 12 gauge semi automatic. And the only thing wrong with it is the stock had a couple of scratches on it from where it looked like they got one of those rubber, um, uh, whatever bumper, bump stocks. Um, or cushions or whatever, you know, so it wouldn't kick so hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, for some reason, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called. But anyway, so it, that was the only thing wrong with it. It was a clean 12-gauge, $300. So it was a 14, it was a Winchester 1400. I think the thing normally goes like $600 on eBay, and I actually got it from the pawn shop for $300. Uh, I spent fifty dollars on eBay for a new stock. Literally took it apart, put the new stock on there. It was beautiful. It was nice. beautiful. Yeah, matched up perfectly with the design and everything. Now I haven't shot that one, but I did take it over to you know, Carter's Country and get it clean. So I, I'm a big fan of Carter's Country. I don't know if many people do Carter's Country around here, but yeah, I'm a big fan. I like the open the open range that they have. It's kind of nice. So, but yeah, they do a good job on cleaning. You need to come down to between Dayton and Liberty and go to that skeet shooting place. Oh yeah. There you go. I, I, I will try that. I will, I will That's try that. Tough. You know, but the semi-automatic, it fit three shells in it. I think is the three shells is the limit. If you want to use it for hunting, Yes. Yeah. But you can remove the corks and go up to like five, I think. Right. So, but yeah, it's a really nice gun. It really is. So, Stephen over there is being all quiet. He says his wife has one, but he doesn't. He has a bow. What's your wife have? Yeah. She's got a nine millimeter uh, Smithfield. Okay. That's nice. We, we go to the uh, Athena, Athena Gun Club. The what? It's called Athena, Athena Gun Club. Oh. Okay. It's at I-10 in the Beltway in Katy. Oh. oh. Very nice place. Yeah. You should go to Carter's Country. Okay. I mean, they're going over by my office. Oh, yeah. Okay. What, Carter's Country? Yeah. Oh, okay. What? Yeah. There's one on the west side of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. They have a range, though, do they? I don't know. I, you know, I go to the one that's off Treswick. It's, it's the original. You know, that was the interesting thing. One of, Eddie, one of the guns Eddie bought when he first went to Carter's Country, he actually bought from the original owner. So, yeah. So it's kind of good interesting. Stories. That's good stories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, okay, we're at a, an hour and eight. Uh, any other quick toys that we want to talk about? Are we, uh, I mean, we pretty much summed up the uh, kind of, Guys like I've been kind of getting into this podcasting thing, so I bought like laptops and these little oh my broadcaster things what? and <laughs> microphones and you know a little bit of hobby going on there. Whatever, yeah, I know. <laughs> the guys have consoles now because they got a game. All their friends gaming together, you know. I know. Hey, I can't yeah. say anything. Me and Steven used to game together on console. Yep. Um, what oh, game? What man, game? Speaking of games. I was on TikTok the other day, and a, uh, a TikTok video came up for Destiny. Really? And they literally did like the the commercial in the beginning. Yeah. Where they're on the like the moon or something, and they're like, "Play me something old school," and they play that immigration song oh, as they jump, go down the hill. But oh. they were they did like all the different like, oh, "Hey, we're on Mars. We're, this is the moon," you know, stuff like that, and it was like. 2014. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so so yeah, me and Steven used to play Destiny together on the Xbox. Yeah, um, and it was me, Big him, time. um, Eric played, yep. and Eric's son, I think, was the other person who played big with us. Yeah, yeah. So um, now, me, me and Nick used to play. Um, we played Star Wars Galaxies, mm. right? 
Yeah, back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I'm talking 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Here. So yeah. It's, that's when Nick, um, he had a bit of a female dancing problem. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> female dancing problem. <laughs> He was a da- he was a female in the game, and he liked to dance a lot. Oh, <laughs> I, I just decided to create my character as a female, and yeah, one of the <laughs> disciplines that I chose was dancing, and that it did something for that. She was a combat medic dancer. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. oh my god, let me tell you, he used to have guys flirt with him all the oh, time. He's a- <laughs> <laughs> yep. it, it was funny as hell oh my god the cool thing about all that is those guys would give me the items that i needed to be one of the best combat medics in the game because there were certain things that i needed certain chemicals that i needed to extract from the ground and i could never find them well i'd go into the bar to dance and these guys would start chatting and it's women, guys. It you know it really didn't matter. So Nick was exchanging would, favors I'm, in a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll dance for you if you give me some material. <laughs> That's right. I need this material. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, I've got tons of it. Well, start the macro because yeah. we're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> oh my god, it was hilarious. Oh, that was so great. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. I was still terrible at that game. Yeah, but you were so good at the dancing part and messing with okay. people. You're such a good socializer, so it was so hilarious. And then when people would find out that you were really a guy, it kind of creeped them out, and it was pretty funny. So. Yeah. <laughs> was, I got my materials, though. I got my materials. <laughs> I know you did, but it was... Yeah, you got what he needed. <laughs> it was hilarious, dude. Oh, my God. We we rolled for a, a long time. And we'd come to work, and we'd talk, oh, you wouldn't believe what this guy said. You know, it's just like, oh... Lord, <laughs> it was funny as hell, though. But, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, so between, you know, Destiny, of course, yeah, me and Steven, we had a lot of great fun. And then, yeah, Star Wars Galaxies, short lived as what's it was. The biggest, what's the biggest online game right now still going? World Destiny Warcraft? is still there. <laughs> Talking about um, World of Warcraft? Yeah, Division World of Warcraft. Two. Oh, yeah, nobody really plays that anymore. Not anymore, but. I- we tried after Galaxies kind of flaked out. We went to World of Warcraft, and I didn't even last two months in that game. I don't think I lasted I a week. It. Yeah. Then I went. Then uh, Star Wars Republic came out, and me and my son got on it and got two accounts and played that for a while. It was pretty much like Galaxies, just a newer version of the life, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Galaxies was years ago in. The, no, uh, no. Was it the other way around? It was the other way around. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I knew they. Star know, the Wars: time... The Old Republic actually was supposed to be. That's what it was. The Old Republic. Yeah, it was basically the old uh, way before the the Jedi was technically or or why right as they were being founded type thing. Because right. in that one you could be a Sith or a Jedi, so the Sith were fairly prevalent. Right. Whereas Star Wars Galaxies actually built its storyline along um, when Darth Vader existed and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah, Han Solo was in it, the yeah. Wookiee, the droids, a whole bit. Yes, 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 yes. And the, the first city 20- we used to play on Naboo, and that was the, the first planet we used to play on. But, yeah, you could do a couple of different planets, so Tatooine, Dantooine. You know, a couple of different ones. And the guys we played with, there are 27 different disciplines, and you had to do them in a certain order so that you could become a Jedi. Oh, wow. Now, one of our one of the guys we played with mastered all 27 disciplines in the time that it took me to master two. Dang. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty it, hardcore. I don't know how <laughs> he did it. And he ended up becoming a senior, uh, senior vice president of the company before he quit. Oh, yeah. I don't know how wow. he, he did that. Yeah, you're talking about one of the Jeff I twins. Macro, I got in trouble because I was bringing my laptop to work, dialing into my NetLink account or Earthlink. Earthlink That's what account. it was. Oh, yeah. 
dialing into my Earthlink account and macroing for the eight hours that I was working, but I had a desktop, so it, I just set it to the side. Then I got called to the carpet by my boss saying, hey, I heard, I'm hearing that you're playing video games all day. And I said, yes, I am. He said, what? <laughs> I said, yes, I am. I said, I have this Star Wars game that I play online. I bring my laptop in. I park it over here. I start macros, and then I go to work. And he's like, well, I couldn't understand that because your ticket counts and all that stuff were within par of you doing, you know, a good day's work. And I couldn't understand that. And he's like, well, we probably shouldn't be doing that anymore, but I'm not going to tell you to stop. That's what he said. <laughs> Paul Richter. Oh, uh, yeah, Paul. I remember that. Yes, I remember that. It's, took me to lunch and thought he was going to, you know. Yeah, I know. Catch playing video games. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I was doing it. Yeah. I wasn't going to lie to him. No. It's, it, it, somebody I obviously already told you. This. I yeah. know. I know. That's so funny. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. So, well, folks, I don't have anything else to share. I'm sure we could go on all night about. Oh, I'm uh, sure we could. Yeah. Yes. So I keep looking to the side here because, you know, Steven's sitting in the same room. So I know it kind of looks weird whenever I don't look at the camera, but you know, folks, you'll have to get over it. Anyway, <laughs> no, but it's you know, it, it's there's so many toys, uh, you know, and and I'm sure we'll do some episode about women and their toys, you know. But um, Nick already said that's the first thing he checks when he stays the night is their toy drawer. Anyway, <laughs> but. <laughs> Anyway, the second check is how it smells. <laughs> That's right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but no, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Anything you want to say to the crowd there, Stephen? Anything left? I know we kind of spun off subject on the guns. You kind of got quiet on us, but you know, I'm, I know not, I'm not a big gun owner. No, you're not. You're you're pretty you much know. your car and stereo. I'm a car guy. guy. Yeah, you I'm are. A car guy through and through. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But you're also a Ford guy. You're, you are, yeah, but I used to not be. Really? Yeah. So what? What was your favorite? Um, probably my 2002 Camaro Z28. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Nice car. I had it loaded That's out. That's a struggle, man. Ford huh? and Chevy. Ford and Chevy. There's a struggle. Yeah. I mean, I was a Ford man for years, and now I'm driving a GMC. And I'm more opted for the Chevy and GMC side for some reason. And I'm not mechanically inclined, so it seems to be easier for me to be able to fix something on a Chevy or GMC than it has been on a Ford. Yeah. I know what, so I, I moved. I just, I, I, I just don't understand the hate, you know, yeah. in the car, well, the car community. Something. You know, oh, you drive a Chevrolet, <laughs> screw you, you know. Yeah. It's like, we're all car guys. We all enjoy the same thing. Who cares yeah. if you drive a Camaro or Subaru or a Honda? I don't care. As long as you don't, not, as long as you don't drive an Audi, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the Audis are nice. Uh, I won't lie. They are okay. nice. But so I'm a, I like my Dodge Ram. I'll be honest with you. I loved my Hemi engine. I, I know it sounds funny, but yeah. That was That's the truck, what, man. Just it, I, yeah, you know? I loved it. It was comfortable. And you know, the funny thing is, I actually test drove a Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado, and my Dodge Ram within an hour of each other. So I drove all three vehicles. I knew what they felt like. When I picked my truck, I knew what I wanted. You know? So, I, you know, I kept an open mind. And I'll be honest with you. The Ford, the turning is t is not as clean. It's a little harder to turn on the trucks than the like the Dodge. The Dodge, I mean, I can almost turn my I could almost turn my truck on a dime type thing. The Chevy used to be really bad about that back in the day. That those trucks wouldn't make a U turn in yeah. the two lane to save your life. That's changed now because I have a GMC Denali. And I can turn that thing on a dime, and it's four-wheel drive diesel. Right. But the Fords, but, yeah. when I test drove my Ford, or the Ford that I did, I was not impressed with the turning. Good power, good comfort, but the turning really turned me off. And the dealership turned me off, too. They were really crappy. So um, it really didn't help. I, I wanted a vehicle without the step rails and all the other... $2,000 worth of crap that they wanted to put on it. 
So I ordered a vehicle from another dealership and had it transferred. And as soon as it got in, they put all the crap on it. And wow. I, I literally looked at them and I'm like, okay, and they were like, what, what can we do to, to get you to buy this truck? And I said, you can drop that $2,000. Well, we can't do that. And I'm like, I ordered this truck from another dealership. You had it transferred and you still put the crap on that I told you I didn't want. Why in the hell would I buy this damn truck from you? <laughs> I was like, I, I don't mind the step rails. They're nice. But I didn't want the $2,000 extra. I was like, that was, I'm trying to keep my payments down to a certain point. You're, you're screwing me. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is you got X plan back then and yeah, it was still, it was annoying. So I went to the Chevy place and they could match the price for the Ford, but the trade in value was 2000 less than the Ford place. And so I was like, Dude, I just got an offer for this much at the Ford place. And he's like, well, we can't do it. And I, I'm like, okay, I'll see you later. And the manager comes walking over and he said, hey, is everything okay? And I'm like, oh, yeah, everything's fine. I said, I like the truck, but your guys just gave me, tried to undercut me by $2,000 because I got this quote next door and you just, you guys just told me this. And he's like, Seriously? And I'm like, yeah. And I open the door. And as I'm walking out the door, the manager is yelling across the place. Who in the fuck evaluated <laughs> this vehicle? Because <laughs> he just saw a sale walk away. And he knows it. Yeah. You know? And so uh, I went to the Dodge place. I didn't have X plan. I didn't have any of that. But I told the guys, like, I, get, I have, have Ford X plan. I said, can you guys do something to, to help me out? He said, yeah, they got me within $1,000 of the Ford price, and they were only $500 off on the trade-in value. And so I literally, I was like, and that was for the Hemi truck. That wasn't even for if I went for the 4.6 liter. That was for the 5.7. I was like, dude, this is, yeah. I mean, I love the way it felt. It was comfortable. It was good. I had that truck for 13 years. Wow, you sure did. Yeah. A lot of miles. Oh, dude, a lot of miles. You don't know how many <laughs> trips we made to Iowa and Indiana and back. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, a lot of miles. Help Nick move one time. Twice. Yep. Twice. <laughs> Twice. Twice. Wait, no. Uh, yeah. Moved into the house and then moved out of the house into the apartment. Yep. So, yeah, I always love that vehicle. Not a car guy, but I love that truck. I ain't gonna lie. Thirteen years. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um okay, Nick, anything for the crowd? I'm good. It was a good show. Love it. Yep. Um we're gonna have Steve Steven back more guys. Just, you know, it's been an interesting um, you know, COVID session and we had Abigail yeah. and it's been kind of crazy around here. But yeah, we'll have Steven back. Um I know he wanted to come but back. Hey, on. you know. What? The Super Bowl? COVID's over with. <laughs> That's oh, what everybody right. says. Whatever. Right. COVID's over with because of Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to comment. And now you got the rodeo. I know. Rodeo's <laughs> back in business, so. I just saw a picture of them at the rodeo and nobody was wearing a mask, so. Yep. I know. I know. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, COVID's yeah. always going to be there. It is. It really it is. is. That's the whole point. And that's, but. Yeah. So other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, folks, you know, hope you enjoyed. Yeah, if you didn't, yeah, your fault. You know. <laughs> <laughs> wait till the next episode. Yeah, wait till the next episode. Enjoyed it. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We did. We enjoyed it. That's all that matters. We yeah. always like getting together. So um, of course, you know, listen, follow, uh, share us, you know, because uh, we're definitely trying to grow. Um, we are waiting for, you know, Junior to do the first cut for the video. So hopefully we, you, we'll be able to send out the YouTube link for you guys soon. So we hope you enjoy. Um, that's all I've got. And uh, keep following. Keep listening.